Okay, thank you. So uh, the next speaker is uh, Dr. Ryu Maniyama. He is uh, an assistant professor uh, at the University of Tokyo at the Graduate School of Information Science and Technology. Ryuma uh, received his PhD in 2010 from the same university and uh, he was a postdoc uh, at MIT Fail, MIT Media Lab, MIT Department of Mechanical Engineering from 2010 to 2014. And uh, his current research interests are uh, in the field of soft actuators, bioinspired robots, continuum manipulators, and inflatable robots. Uh, Dr. Nyama is going to present uh, his uh, talk entitled Soft Robotics on the Body. So I'd like to leave the floor uh, to Dr. Nyama. Please, Matteo, if you can remove the screen sharing. Okay, please, Ryoma. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm sharing the slide. Okay. Can you see my slide and can you hear me? Good. Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Duma Niyama from the University of Tokyo. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm gonna talk about the uh, recent projects our works related on the uh, soft robotics on the body. Um, so I'm very interested in both understanding uh, musculoskeletal system of the animal and how to make uh, soft machines. And the, our musculoskeletal body is, uh, is the uh, inspiring um, systems, mechanical systems um, that consist of rigid parts and soft parts, its bone and muscles. And soft robotics uh, requires such a design principle how to uh, mix the uh, rigid frame with soft actuators. And also the um, animals uh, um, can move very agile uh, dynamic motions. So we can translate that uh, features to the robotics, even in uh, soft uh, systems. So uh, in, the, in the today's um, talk, I'm gonna talk about soft actuators and some of the examples of uh, physical human robot interaction, maybe not interaction, but uh, wearable devices and uh, personal, mo personal mobility devices. So um, I'm, I've been work, uh, thinking of the, what's the uh, advantages of soft robotics. So um, I believe that uh, soft robotics can expand the material, material options. So I think the soft robotics is not only about, about soft bodied robots, that's the um, narrow uh, scopes, but uh, the soft robotics um, can mix the fast rigid robots and soft bodied robots and expands the material options. So actually, uh, a human body uh, consists of made of uh, many kinds of materials. So some of the materials is very soft, like a, a gel, hydrogel. And for example, like our teeth is actually very hard, very hard, um, like metal materials. So if we can use wide range of materials, then the, we can update the robotics, the robot technologies. So what, that's the uh, big goal, 
the ideal uh, design of the robotics, I think. And uh, also um, role of softness here. Uh, so many uh, benefits of softness, but I would like to focus on the softness uh, as the interface between the machine and the body. Well, our body is um, covered with very soft skin, but the, the conventional robot is very hard. So between that, we need uh, some kind of mediation system. And uh, softness is the key essential uh, features. And for example, in the wearable devices, um, between the soft body and uh, rigid mechanism, we always need soft birds. And for example, in the sh shaking hands, uh, if we only have the rigid fingers, maybe the shaking hands are not comfortable experiences, but we have soft, fresh and skin. So the such a gesture, shaking hands, uh, achieved. Um, in the in the talk, uh, I'm also I would like to mention about the wearable devices, not only for human but for rat. So, um, um, in the first section, I'm going to talk about musculoskeletal robot we developed in the lab. So these are the musculoskeletal robots we developed with students and colleagues. We started these robot from the uh, jumping robot, but now we have quadruped robots, uh, swimming robots, and other robots for sports skills. Uh, we also have leader follower system for musculoskeletal system. Uh, we also tried um, tensegrity uh, mechanism with mus uh, artificial muscles. That's the formable uh, technique for the um, smart houses or architectures. So we are uh, interested in such a system using many muscles. Um, I'm gonna show you some videos of these robots. The first robot is a Mogli robot. It's a jumping robot driven by pneumatic muscles. This robot have by articular muscles. Uh, so by articular muscles are um, affect to more than single joint. So two joints are uh, driven by the single muscles. So uh, in this case, the between the joints, it's the correlated motions are embedded in the uh, design of the musculoskeletal system, artificial musculoskeletal system. Other example of musculoskeletal robot is a swimming robot. So we use big pool and put the human scale musculoskeletal robots in the pool. So we tried to understand what the uh, efficient control of the uh, swimming motions. So in this case, the pneumatic muscles and polymer-based uh, frames are water resistant, not like electric motor and uh, rotors. So it's um, relatively easy to perform such an experiment in the, in the water. 
So uh, this the folder shows the Machiavian type pneumatic artificial muscles. It's actually the very classic types of uh, pneumatic artificial muscles. Recently, these muscles are used in the uh, commercialized uh, powered exoskeleton. Uh, in Japan, uh, we can purchase these kind of uh, exoskeleton suits called muscle suit. Um, but unfortunately, these uh, robot suits are, have many rigid parts, not soft uh, suits like uh, Kyujin's talk. So obviously the challenges are the anchoring these uh, muscle, artificial muscle to the soft human body. And other issues are energy sources and uh, uh, cost of the devices. And here uh, it's an overview of the um, it, this illustration provides more general view of the uh, pneumatic muscles. So uh, pneumatic muscles, um, including Machiavian type muscles, are actually the um, soft, deformable air chamber surrounded by fibers. And uh, depends on the um, orientation of the fibers, we can uh, obtain the many kind of deformation, not just um, muscle-like motions. We can even uh, get the uh, twisting motions and uh, elongation of the muscles. And many types of pneumatic muscles are um, proposed and uh, there are many ongoing projects. So uh, actuation is okay for the pneumatic systems, but uh, we need the sensors. And um, I would like to uh, introduce our projects on the uh, sensing on the mus pneumatic muscles. So in this case, muscles have um, verge on strain, like uh, two hundred percent to three hundred percent. So the ordinary materials cannot pass suitable for these systems. So we use uh, air uh, to detect the uh, length. So actually, that we used acoustic uh, effect. So we put the very tiny speakers on the end of the uh, pneumatic muscles. And we apply chirp signal to the speakers and uh, we measure the resonance uh, by the microphone. So we can count the uh, position of the peaks of the resonance. Then we can just calculate the length of the uh, chamber. So uh, the, this sensor is not affected by the bending of the muscles, but just um, can measure the rings of the muscles. So um, maybe uh, many researchers are trying to embed the soft sensors on the pneumatic muscles, many types of principles like microfluidic optics and uh, conductive yarn, but uh, because we used just uh, sound or acoustics, um, we can achieve the uh, very large range of motion. So if you're interested in this sensor, um, please access to our uh, paper by searching the acoustic length sensor. So um, if you're, by the way, so if you're interested in making these kind of pneumatic muscles, 
uh, we opened a website uh, named Open uh, Soft Machines. So in this website, uh, we also have the YouTube channel. Uh, we have many uh, recipe videos shows, that shows how to make muscles or how to make EEA actuator or how to make caterpillar robot. Um, if you can access to this website, you can see this kind of uh, videos. So off the shelf materials, we can actually uh, make your own out show muscles very easily. It's just scissors and op ovens and rubber tubes. And in this case, just push the uh, cylinder, we can make a extensible type pneumatic muscles. So please try uh, your own muscles. Please see the videos. Okay, from here, um, let's move on to the uh, printable soft actuators. So uh, we did propose printable planar uh, pneumatic actuator called Couch Motors. It's published in 2015 in Soft Robotics Journal and we provide that linear pouch motor and angular pouch motor. Uh, as you can see, it's very simple mechanisms. Just put a doubled film on the uh, special welding machine, then we can uh, turn and weld the uh, tiny air chambers and just inflate these chambers. It works as muscles or bending actuators. The good thing is that, that we reduce the dimension of the actuator from 3D to 2D. So uh, it's improved, it has improved fabrication complexity and it's easy to design on the drawing software. Uh, And that's the very brief history of the these film-based fluidic actuators. Uh, we propose pouch motors, but in parallel, uh, Yon Lei Perk uh, also tries the flattened PAM, and the company other lab also tries a uh, fabric-based actuator in in the inflatable robot. And these uh, actuators have many follow-up uh, projects and have many improvements. Um, so uh, we all uh, noticed that the biological muscles are very different from uh, artificial muscles. Actually, the biological muscles are not just wires, um, sometimes in the musculoskeletal robots, the muscle is just the tubes, but actually the uh, biological muscles have very complicated structure with tendon and the membranes and uh, uh, angled uh, muscle fibers. So we have also tried to mimic such uh, features with pouch motors. Uh, we tried to make a both parallel muscle and uh, pinnate muscles or pinnate, pinnate muscles. Um, so just um, adjusting the angles of the uh, pouch and adjusting the pouch angle, uh, we can design both power type muscles and speed type muscles. So the power type muscles have large uh, contraction force, but uh, less 
uh, contraction ratio. Um, in contrast, the speed type muscle have uh, less contraction force, but large range of motion. So that's very interesting. It's uh, from the analogy of the biological muscles, we can uh, control the um, properties of the muscle by this um, technique. So uh, maybe the frequently asked question is, uh, such a pneumatic actuators, soft pneumatic actuator requires a bulky air compressor. Yes and uh, no. Uh, so for the powerful movements, we need large uh, compressor, but we can also try a uh, tiny electric uh, pump and also the uh, tanks. And we also tried other principles to uh, achieve untethered uh, pneumatic actuator. So in this case, in the pouch, uh, we filled the pouch with low boiling temperature point wicket and uh, heat, uh, put the heat on the pouch by the flexible heater. So it's, a, so it's a, a pneumatic actuator. Uh, fluidic actuator, but driven by the uh, heat. So it looks like the electric actuator. So please see the both uh, muscle-like actuator and angular actuators. Um, as you can see, it's untethered, it's, there's no uh, cables or tubes. Uh, in this case, uh, we use a heat gun to um, heat up the and uh, boil the uh, liquid in the pouch. And not uh, other than the flexible heater or heat gun, we can also use laser beam or the body temperature to activate these muscles, actuators. Um, of course, um, the, it's multiple by 10, so it's slow, but uh, maybe suitable for a uh, not rapid application, but uh, slow applications. I'd like to introduce some of the applications and this is a, a prototype of the actuated corsage for the uh, garment by using these um, wicked pouch motors. And in this case, uh, the ideally the body temperature can activate this uh, corsage, but in this case we uh, used a pelt J module for the uh, exhibition. And uh, put the many uh, course, uh, actuate corsage on the dress, then we actually uh, have uh, installation, artistic inter installation in the exhibitions. And this, this is a very fancy uh, applications, but we also try the more um, we have related applications with the uh, pouch motors. So uh, the background of this project is uh, rehabilitation of spinal cord injury. Um, so we developed rat, uh, robotic suits for rats. And uh, the aim of this project is the uh, active training for the uh, subjects. And uh, new scientists uh, believe that this kind of active training on the treadmills uh, can possibly uh, recover 
uh, voluntary locomotion um, locomotion. And uh, these are the design overview. Uh, we made a tiny exoskeleton for the rat, and it's actuated by the four pouch motor muscles. Uh, that this exoskeleton have antagonistic uh, mechanism for hip joint and uh, knee joint. Uh, it's it have the valves valve so we can control the hip joint and knee joint uh, with binary uh, manner, and we use only that's only forty kilopascal. So it's the I can say it's low pressure. So uh, the, this is a preliminary result. Uh, we actually tried the, as this robot suits on the uh, living rats on the treadmill. And we can successfully actually the leg of the uh, rats by this system uh, still the range of motions are uh, small, but uh, uh, the point is that, uh, that one of the point is the how to miniaturize the pouch motors. And we found that the specific uh, aspect ratio is the uh, point for, for to, to achieve the uh, large uh, strain for the muscles. So these are the uh, pneumatic muscles and soft actuator things. And uh, from here, uh, uh, I'd like to talk about inflatable robot and uh, inflatable uh, personal mobility devices. So I'm interested in musculoskeletal system, but uh, recently uh, I've been working on continuum robot, uh, both continuum, continuum robot arm and inflatable robot. Uh, both robotic systems have continuum body and have um, infinite degrees of freedom. So the challenges are how to control the deformation and uh, uh, how to utilize the uh, cost-effective lightweight um, safety properties of this system. So uh, today I'm gonna focus on the inflatable uh, robots. And actually, not many projects, but uh, uh, some of the of the researchers are uh, focusing on the inflatable system for both robotic systems and human computer interaction. Um, in the HCI field, uh, some of the researchers try to make a inflatable mouse or inflatable buttons displays. And the, the interesting example is the bicycle helmet uh, made of inflatable structure. It's actually the commercialized product, so you can purchase this inflatable helmet. And uh, of course, the Baymax robot and the uh, original of Baymax robot is uh, inflatable arm system by uh, Sanan. And there are some uh, exciting projects like inflatable uh, architecture, inflatable floor, and the inflatable uh, curve. And one day, uh, our inflatable robot project is the blower paired inflatable joints. So usually the inflatable robots uh, employs the 
sealed inflatable and uh, no leaks, no air leaks. But in this case, this inflatable is blower powered, so constantly push the air into the inflatable. Um, so uh, one of the advantage of this system is the uh, it's robust against air leaks because the inner pressure is actively controlled uh, by the blower power and the uh, inner pressure is measured by the pressure sensor and it's feedback control. So it's a very uh, simple example, but uh, it's a large scale, but very lightweight. So the safety could be the benefit of this system. So we are actually uh, developing the more complicated system with this uh, mechanical joint. Hope we can uh, introduce the new robot in the in a near future. And we also tried a very uh, different project on the personal mobility devices by using this inflatable uh, structure. So the question is how to make portable personal mobility devices. So uh, there are many products on the uh, electric kick scooter and bicycle, but uh, just folding mechanisms are used in these uh, products. So the uh, scale of the products are just half of the original size by this folding mechanism. So in the movie, movie Tron, uh, we can see the uh, rapid tree pop-up motorcycle in the virtual world. So we envision that, that, that kind of the portable uh, personal mobility devices that can deploy and uh, hold in the very tiny uh, space. So uh, we employ the drop stitch fabric, the very uh, special types of fabric for uh, achieving these goals. And this drop stitch fabric, it's also known as double wall fabric. Uh, there are many strengths between the two uh, walls and that's why this inflatable structure can uh, tolerate higher pressure than the uh, usual PVC inflatables. And we can also uh, make a plate of the inflatable by this fabric. So um, by assembling the, some of the uh, inflatable plate, we can um, achieve the motorcycle uh, shape or other shapes of the inflatable mobilities by this by using this material. And we also uh, developed the dedicated uh, CAD software for this kind of inflatable mobility devices. We can uh, slide, use sliding bar to change the design parameters of these mobility devices. We can change the diameter of the wheels or the angle of the steering. And this software can export these data as the 3D model. And we can uh, now uh, use that model to uh, generate 2D patterns of the inflatable and uh, balloon company can just produce the inflatable based on this pattern, then we can get the uh, real motorcycle.
And we also um, try to make a wheelchair by this um, inflatable structure. So even the wheels are made of inflatable. Still, it's very primitive structure, no pedal, for example, but uh, it actually can um, support the uh, adult human. And it's made of inflatable, so we can just uh, deflate this wheelchair to fold and packed in the uh, bag. And this is a, a drive system with the motorcycle shaped inflatable mobility devices. We use electric motor to frictionally drive the inflatable wheel and uh, in the hallway of the university buildings, we can ride on this inflatable mobility devices. So it's a um, funny project, but uh, it maybe it's related on the uh, robotic devices very close to the uh, human body. So this is a, a, let's wrap up my talk. This is a summary. Um, I did introduce uh, soft actuators uh, pneumatic muscles and uh, printable couch motors. And um, I introduced some of the applications of these soft actuators on wearable devices, including robot suits for rats and inflatable personal mobility devices. Uh, that's all. Thank you for listening. Uh, comments and questions are very welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, the very interesting presentation. Are there questions from the audience? Okay. Uh, please, uh, Raul Duran. Yes, hello. Uh, it was a very interesting talk. So can you hear me? Thanks. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, more than a question, like I want to know uh, if you can share again, like the website or the you tell us about like the uh, kind of workshops for create like artificial muscles. And the second uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. comment is about like the software that you use for create like this kind of uh, uh, inflation like inflatable devices is a open source software that we can use like uh, if we are in different universities. Okay, so uh, in the chat, I did input the uh, URL for this, our website, Open Soft Machines. So we can, you can just visit these things, uh, enjoy the artificial muscles. <laughs> so, uh, Thank you. Mm -hmm. So for the uh, second questions, um, for the design software for inflatable inflatables, um, unfortunately, this software is not open source yet. Uh, it's developed in Unity. I'm um, not sure you're familiar with Unity uh, software, but um, it has uh, now limited functions, but it's terrible. Um, maybe you can access more detailed information on our paper uh, published in uh, UIST, it's a conference in the HCR field. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the uh, questions. Thank you, uh, Raul. I can see another question, Miranda, Miranda Lauter. 
Uh, hello. Hi, Dr. Niyami. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I found it really interesting. Um, I just had a question um, when you were from when you were covering the exoskeleton research that you do. Um, just out of curiosity, um, how do you attach the pouch motor, uh, the uh, pouch actuators to the exoskeleton? And do you think that there's better ways that we could attach the muscle to the um, exoskeleton such that um, it's more accurately bio-inspired and possibly produces more effective results? I see. Uh, that's a very interesting point. Um, I'll share the slide again. Um, yeah. So uh, you mean the exoskeleton of this case? Or the rat? Uh, yes, or the um, part with the pouch motors where you were making the pouch okay. motor for the bicep? Yeah, in this case, the uh, exoskeleton frame is printed by 3D printer, so it's a, a resin. So it's because it's very tiny system, so we can just uh, glue the pouch motors film on the uh, rigid purse. Mm. Uh, that's, that's enough for this system because the uh, tension force is not much. So for the, in other cases, for example, like more large scale things, um, we also printed uh, tendon-like parts on the end of the uh, arch motors. And uh, it's actually the, have, the film have some elasticity and the end of the uh, tendon is just a loop of the film. So we can use um, metal pin on the uh, frame side then The loop is um, attached on the, uh, uh, the pins on the uh, bone. That's the one of the approach we used to, to connect the muscle on the bone. But uh, um, actually the uh, tendon part is the uh, challenging part. Sometimes um, we experienced the broken tendon and more large poles, uh, we need more uh, strong, uh, thick uh, film. So that, that's the uh, comments from our side. Okay, thank you for answering my question and thank you for the presentation. It was really interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you, Miranda. I can see another people are interested in question. Yeah, uh, Munda. I don't know the exact pronunciation. Please. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Riyama Sensei, uh, for your insightful talk. So I have a few questions uh, related to the, uh, you know, the basic uh, soft robotic system. We, we know the muscle actuator has like high strength to weight ratio but that does not consider the compressor and all the other peripheral components like uh, walls and all those things. So if you consider all sure. those systems, uh, the strength and weight ratio is not that much com compared to the electric motor. So I was mm -hmm. really inspired by your research in the liquid pouch motor, but I'm interested mm -hmm. in the, uh, because I see those videos are short in like 20 X time. So is there any, any future prospect we can increase the speed of actuation of those liquid actuation? Because I know there is a couple of uh, research ongoing uh, using electrolysis and uh, your topic, which is heating the uh, low boiling fluid. So which approach is more better to increase the actuation speed and get the maximum strain and force? I see. Um, and uh, good points and the thank you for the questions. Um, the, the speed is the... Uh, Obviously, the yeah big challenges on this uh, 
soft actuators and on the wicked pouch motors, uh, the contraction is kind of um, fast, relatively faster than the uh, loosening the actuator. So um, inflation is the easy part and we can just input the large energy to the uh, low boiling temperature wicket in the pouch. Then after we can get the one second or two second to inflate the actuator. But in on the other, other hand, the deflation of the uh, pouch, uh, that means from gas to wicket, uh, phase shifting that takes uh, longer time. So uh, we just tried um, aluminum laminated film to get a better cooling system, but it's actually the remaining issues, I think. And other uh, Other technique is the, well, yeah, other technique is the, um, recently the hazel actuator that using the like DEA uh, like principles. So by using high voltage then by using the uh, electrostatic force to push the wicket that um, can produce the rapid um, pressure force on the wicket. So that's the one of the approach to make the rapid wicket large motors, I think. So it's it's random comments, but um, hope it helped. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Sure. That really helps. Uh, and there was another question from my side: uh, Is uh, you're okay. working on continuum continuum uh, robots using the uh, soft pneumatic actuator, the PAM muscles? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, the PAM muscles, which are using the nonlinear material as well as there is a compliance due to the air. So that mm -hmm. makes the overall system, uh, the control very nonlinear. So what kind of strategies uh, you are implementing to control those kind of continuum arms? Oh, I see. Um, thank you for the questions. Uh, so not, not in the, uh, today's talk, but uh, we have continuum arm driven by the pneumatic muscles and uh, we, we, we are using machine learning technique, actually the reinforcement learning technique to control the uh, continuum robot arm. So that's because the soft continuum robot arm is very hard to model. And uh, we tried the <coughs> reinforcement learning both in the simulation simulator and <clears throat> in real world. So I would like to share some of the slides now. So for example, here uh, we employ the SAC. It's one of the reinforcement learning technique and the success free uh, perform the reaching task on the continuum arm robot. And we also tried the same technique in the real world and uh, learning the reaching motions from uh, from scratch. And uh, it's very shaky, but uh, we can actually do the same things 
in the simulator in the real world. So that's one of the approach. So machine learning techni techniques, but uh, um, as, as maybe as you might know, the, some of the researchers try to make a more detailed model for these both actuators in the quantum robot term. So I'm not sure which is the um, best, but uh, we can try the model based and uh, machine learning based. Uh, thank you very much, Rima Sensei. That was very insightful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. We have another uh, question. Enrica Stefanelli, please. Uh, yes, uh, okay. uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, and uh, I am interested on uh, acoustic uh, length sensors. Uh, so can you give me some information uh, about them, about their application uh, and uh, how to use them? Okay, uh, thank you for the questions. So for the applications, we can just, we just uh, apply these sensors on our uh, continuum robot because the our continuum robot arm do not have any sensors. So um, maybe you might be interested in the uh, uh, basic principles of this sensor or the applications. Uh, uh, yes, uh, for both of, uh, of us, uh, also the, the user of the sensors uh, and also if you have used these sensors in your application. I see. Okay, I, I'm going to also share the uh, other slide. So the motivation was a we developed the extensible type pneumatic muscles, but no sensors for sensing the uh, length. So the continuum robot term, we have bending motions, but it, it's a parallel three muscles in a single segment. So if we can measure the length of three parallel muscles, we can estimate the bending angles of the continuum robot term. So that's actually the one, uh, the application of our sensors. But large deformation and the bending things. So uh, this photo shows the uh, speakers and the microphone. It's very tiny and embedded in the, uh, the end cap of the muscles. And regarding the uh, sensing principles, um, it's like a resonance. So in the air column, we can see the uh, resonance by the many peaks. So we can count the uh, peaks of these things and the frequency shift of these peaks, then we can um, calculate the length of the sensor. So it's actually uh, very linear, not affected by the um, bending or the deformation. That's good for the control. We also try the feedback control, but uh, uh, it's it's not so rapid. But uh, so the summary is the application is for the quantum robot term, and uh, we we are apply the signal processing for this system to uh, calculate the rings. Okay, thank you, very, very interesting. Thank you for your answer. Thank you so much.
Okay, thank you, Erika. And so uh, we, we can close this talk. Thank you very much, Ryuma, for uh, your insightful uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, we can go ahead with the, the next speaker. Thanks, uh, uh, Ryuma. Thank you. And, thank you for joining me.